Stefan, thank you very much indeed for your time today. We greatly appreciate it. Here in Europe, it feels like we are um, in a situation that's, that's throughout this crisis never been so bad. Um, we've got rising case counts, we've got new variants, yet companies such as yours are very much at the front of the, the battle trying to, to push the virus back. What is your expectation about when you think the efforts with vaccines, the efforts with therapeutics and the efforts that governments are making are going to make a meaningful impact? When do we get back to normal? I think we should remember that it's a remarkable success uh, by this industry that we have vaccines now approved, where we have uh, done the basic research, the, the clinical development program, less than a year after the uh, after the pandemic uh, pandemic hit us. So uh, we have in Europe and the U.S. the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine mRNA vaccine, the Moderna mRNA vaccine is approved, the AstraZeneca Jenner Institute vaccine is approved in India and in the. And in the UK, and we all assume that approval in the EU is is imminent. And I think other players, such as Johnson Johnson, are also making very good progress. We've also seen that the Chinese vaccine from Sinopharm uh, have uh, presented very very convincing data. So so we are actually in a uh, in a situation that nobody would have nobody would have foreseen that we would have such mm -hmm. uh, such tools at hand as uh, as soon as as soon as now. Now different countries react differently. We've seen how successful Israel is managing is is managing the situation. We've seen a couple of hiccups in the United States, hiccups in in the EU. But I'm very confident that we will soon have sufficient uh, uh, sufficient vaccine supplies available. Uh, to vaccinate the, those who critically need a vaccine. I mean, everyone's going to critically need the vaccine, Stefan. And I'm wondering, as you are very much in the center of developing these manufacturing platforms for vaccines, when do we get to industrial scale manufacturing? What are the missing links that you need to do that? These, techno these vaccines technologies are very, very different. You know, you have classical vaccine. You have so-called subunit vaccines, viral vector vaccines, mRNA. These are these are technologies that are dif uh, difficult uh, difficult to compare. So the challenges vary from technology uh, to uh, to technology. We have heard uh, actually yesterday that uh, BioNTech, Pfizer have declared that they're planning to double uh, production uh, production capacity. AstraZeneca has partnered with Serum Institute of India, the largest manu vaccine manufacturer in the, in, in the world, with very big, uh, very big capacity. So again, I think there is a lot of progress is, uh, is is being made. Different countries use different approaches, but most countries have in common that they start with the most vulnerable populations, people in in, in nursing homes and uh, frontline healthcare workers, law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement people, etc., and then they go, go forward based on the uh, based on yep. the individual risk. Stefan, you just made an acquisition, Amtech, in the messenger RNA space. What do you think the potential for that space is now? Um, we we've never seen RNA used in this way. We've never seen a, an RNA vaccine being given regulatory approval. It has now. I, what is the potential you, here? Which other uh, sort of areas are we focusing on? Where do you see the potential? Oncology looks like being uh, an area that we could see huge benefits. Yeah, you, I mean, there has been very active research in the mRNA space for, for actually decades already. Uh, the issue was delivery, and the issue was avoiding the development of so-called autoantibodies. And these companies that are the forefront right now have managed that extremely have managed that extremely well. The uh, companies like like BioNTech, CureVac, Moderna had mostly focused on oncology in the past, and my assumption is that this will continue. But for instance, we've also we've lately seen, we've seen uh, very interesting data about mRNA, multiple sclerosis, and in other other disease areas. The effect of the COVID vaccine is going to be that this technology platform will be used in millions and millions of patients, and we will have safety data from millions of patients. So I think that is a major uh, a sort of a watershed uh, a moment in the biopharmaceutical industry where we will have a completely new platform that is highly adaptable, that is almost 
digital in a certain uh, in, in, in a certain sense. So this is really very important and it has huge potential. We as Merck want to be very much in that. We have you know lipids, we're making highly specialized lipids for the li delivery of mRNA and we've now acquired Amtech. So we want to offer a full, the full range of materials and solutions for mRNA makers. Um, when do you think that the world will see the success of that? Um, the mRNA with the vaccine came so quickly. Uh, when do we think we can start getting, say, cancer treatments from that? Well, you know, there are some phase two data already, uh, uh, proof of concept data in different uh, in different cancer indications. Uh, the the uh, the mRNA companies have now focused very much on the va on vaccine development for, uh, uh, against COVID. Uh, so uh, we we will see that they will go back into oncology and into other areas soon. They're getting funds. They can now uh, they can uh, fund their uh, their their research and development uh, development efforts. So I think that we will. Uh, it, it's sort of unscientific to make precise predictions, but my assumption is that within uh, the next uh, few years we will see such products on the market. Stefan, you're a useful um, indicator as to what is happening, big picture at a macro level. Um, are you starting to see any of your companies, uh, any of your divisions, you have three main kind of areas that you focus on, are, are, the, are the customers of any of those divisions starting to front run a recovery? Are you starting to see orders picking up? Well, you know, the, uh, we have three businesses, as you say. We have our healthcare business, biopharmaceuticals, we have our life science uh, uh, our life science business with everything basically scientists need for research and, and bio pharmaceutical and vaccine companies need for manufacturing uh, uh, and then we have our performance materials business which is mostly about electronic materials and we see in all three areas we see a very robust demand especially our life science business has been has uh, has been boosted also by the uh, by the uh, corona crisis. We see negative impacts of lockdown, physical lockdowns, where we see that academic research centers, when they're being closed, there are less orders, but all in all, the uh, demand is very robust. Within our performance materials business, we mostly serve the semiconductor and the display industry. Uh, we see that the semiconductor industry is going through a strong growth phase. I mean, we, all of us, we are communicating digitally right now. And that requires laptops and servers and me logic and memory and me uh, uh, many uh, many other uh, mm -hmm. related technologies. And that drives that market. We have seen a slow, obviously like anybody else, a slow development in the automotive and cosmetics industry, where we have where we have uh, a smaller businesses. We seeing we see we are observing a slight uh, improvement in the uh, in the automotive industry. The cosmetics industry is still lagging behind. Uh, Stefan, let's. Uh, I want to, as we wrap up, I want to ask one question about antibodies. Um, you guys manufacture some of the uh, the antibody treatment when it comes to COVID. Is it work against the new strain? How can you scale? What are the, what's the impact? There's there are many antibody projects throughout the uh, throughout the world. Uh, there are there is uh, there are two antibodies that are currently being approved already. We are developing. We are focusing uh, on a, uh, a compound that be, that is called M5049, an investigational compound to treat the pneumonia, so the immunological complications. Uh, our assumption, and that's what all the experts say, is that we have a, a continued need for for treatments in addition to uh, in, a in addition to vaccines. And uh, we, we we believe that uh, the the that physicians and healthcare workers need to have a full armamentarium. Um, the currently approved antibodies are approved in spe very specific setting, high risk patients that are not yet hospitalized, etc. And we need more such anti more such antibodies. Uh, just like with the vaccines, we, uh, we, we have observed that the new variants seem to be also being uh, neutralized by, the, uh, by yeah. the antibodies that are currently being worked on.